This is one of the most sombre days in the Christian year, but it's also one of the most important. And we meet here to worship the Lord who gave himself for us. Alex is going to bring us a reading from John's Gospel. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe. And went, and went up to him again and again, saying, Heal, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you. Let you know that I have found no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here's the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. 
As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law and according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said, don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it weren't not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a great sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, if you let this man go, you're a new friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judge's seat, a place known as the Stone Pavement, which is in Aramic in Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them. Good Friday is not the most popular day in the Christian calendar. In fact, most Christians bounce from the joy of Palm Sunday to the joy of Easter Day with all the praise and all the rejoicing that involves without the nasty bit in between. But the trouble is there is no Easter Day without the nasty bit in between. And how trivial to call the day the Son of God loved us and gave himself for us as the nasty bit. We shrink from it, we recoil from it, but we have to face it because it was there that our salvation was procured. Good Friday involves Jesus being flogged, strips of flesh lifted from his back, it involved him being jeered, beaten, mocked. They placed the crown of thorns on his head, but they did not make him their king. They dressed him in a scarlet robe. They pretended he was their king, but they were only pretending. Many today pretend that Jesus is their king. They pay homage to him now and again, maybe on a Sunday. They might even pay homage to him a lot at church and Bible studies and prayer meetings, but he isn't king of their lives. He doesn't reign anywhere else. He doesn't rule in their lives anywhere. They do. This Good Friday, with all that's going on in the world, it's a good day to review, to look at ourselves, look inside ourselves. Is Jesus King, or are we pretending? The crown of thorns is for some reason the part of the crucifixion story that troubles me the most. Maybe it's just because of how tender we feel in the temple brow region. The thought of a crown of thorns pushed into the Saviour's head is a terrible thought. It obviously brought him terrible pain. But the pain was magnified by the mockery, the fact that he was anything but a king. When we pretend Jesus is king, when we ignore his rule in our lives, when we pretend we hurt him all over again and we mock him all over again, we push the thorns back in. But it was there on the cross, scourged, mocked, rejected, beaten, tortured, and eventually killed, that Christ brought salvation into the world, to you and to me. We cannot rejoice on Sunday and sing of the empty tomb if the Lord hasn't died first. We can't triumph over death if there is no death. Jesus died on that first Good Friday, died a horrible death for us. 
the least we can do is remember and give thanks and then give him his rightful place in our lives. Make him the king he deserves to be by putting aside our own control of our lives, which let's face it, never goes very well anyway, and surrendering all to him. Of course, Satan will tell you that Jesus will spoil your life. Isn't that the very first lie that Satan told in the Garden of Eden? He questioned God's goodness. He mocked and he said, when Adam and Eve were told not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because they would die, Satan said, you will not surely die. You won't. That's not right. God isn't to be trusted. He's not wanting your good. He's out to spoil your life. Many a person has rejected God on that very level. If I give my life over to God, he will spoil it. You will not surely die. Today, if you look at the cross and see the Son of God bloodied and bruised and tortured, see him there willingly. It wasn't the nails that kept him on the cross, but something much more powerful, love. Love for us and love for the very people who put him there. How can you look at that cross and not believe that the one who hung there doesn't want your life to be better? That's why he did it, so that you could know and love him now and then live in his presence forever. The word corona comes from the Latin word for crown. I presume that's where we get words like coronation and coronet. The coronavirus is so-called because it looks like a crown under a microscope. In fact, it looks like a thorny crown. You've seen the pictures. The world today is obsessed with the thorny crown of the coronavirus. But Christians can be obsessed with a better crown of thorns worn by our Saviour to bring us eternal life. One corona brings death and the other brings life. And the wonderful thing about the Lord is that that crown of thorns was swapped by God. The Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians says, therefore God exalted him, Jesus, to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. One day he will reign as King of kings and Lord of lords, no mocking, no pretending, he will be Lord.
Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we come to you in prayer today on Good Friday, remembering the day you were tried, convicted, mocked, beaten and crucified. We remember how you died and were laid in the tomb amid the signs of incredible grief, fear, shock and sorrow. Instead of jumping ahead to the happy ending when you arose from the dead on Easter morning, help us to meditate today on Good Friday on your great sacrifice, your suffering and pain that you endured for our sake and for the sake of the whole world. In our greatest times of suffering, we realise that we never have suffered as you did. You deserved life, honour and praise, yet you willingly chose death, dishonour and ridicule in order to complete God's plan. You could have opened your mouth and with just a few words you could have answered your accusers and proven them to be frauds, hypocrites and liars, yet you remained silent. You could have called legions of angels and yet you submitted your back to cruel scourges. You could have called down fire from heaven, yet you instead allowed the blood to flow from your hands, your feet, onto the wood of the cross. You could have called a fiery chariot like Elijah and been taken up into heaven, yet you chose for your lifeless body to be laid down into a cold, dark tomb. Lord Jesus, we are overwhelmed by the depth of your sacrifice. May we sit in silence and allow ourselves to look with an open heart toward the cross. May the knowledge of your suffering and crucifixion journey move from our minds and settle in our hearts. Help us to feel the tension between great sacrifice and great love between suffering and redemption, between death and life, between the fleeting and the eternal. Help us to experience the unseen force of grace and obedience and weep with both joy and sorrow at the great cost. Jesus Christ, Son of God, on this day of all days, have mercy on us sinners. Amen. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bowed and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the ancient sea. A heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name. Oh, pray.